Hi, welcome today. I am going to be revealing to you a very interesting journey that the sun makes through the zodiacal calendar throughout the year. Hi, my name is Michael Bartlett, Master Metaphysical Astrologer, and I offer metaphysical astrology and experiential coaching for those of you seeking profound self-transformation and empowerment. And in today's episode, I'm going to be revealing how your sun sign reveals aspects about you, but also to actually show more about how the sun makes its journey through the different signs and how it transforms in the process of doing so. This is the sun's journey through the zodiac signs, unveiling its astrological costumes and tools. Key things to know about the sun. First of all, the sun's glyph is a circle with a dot in the middle of it. This symbolizes our inherent personality, our inherent sense of self within the greater whole. The sun spends about an average of 30.41 days in each of the astrological signs, and it takes 365.25 days for the earth to make its full orbit around the sun or what we consider to be the year. The sun is our star and all the light that we see from each of the planets out in our solar system are because of the light being reflected back from our sun. As I said earlier, it represents our personality and our ego and it takes time to become. So when you look in that horoscope and you read about your sun sign and you think, well, that isn't really quite who I am, there are also some mitigating factors that might affect that. First and foremost, if you are a night birth, that can make a big difference with it, but also just the ways in which each of us express ourselves along the continuum and some ways in which we might have combination of our planets and aspects with one another, which I'll talk about in a future video. So as you can see, the Zodiac is a band of constellations in outer space, which circles around our solar system. It's really more about what our vantage point is. If you see the earth is here in the middle, the sun is going around in this sort of a long way around through each of the signs from our vantage point, the sun is in between and then the zodiac is a band around. So when I go through this today, please note this goes in a circle, even though this is gonna be of course being presented in a straight line because that's just how things are done. The first sign we come to in the astrological calendar is the sign Aries. Aries is this boldness. It's cardinal fire. It's about reaching into these new places, new frontiers. It's about being born and having newness. There's this experience of having innocence and just going into things that I like to say, going where angels fear to tread. But then when the sun moves into the sign of Taurus, it becomes a little more relaxed. You know, you can see that glass of wine in his hand. You can see that he's got some grapes in his other hand. He's sitting there kicking back, relaxing in his vault with his money, realizing that this has to do with resources and values. Taurus is a fixed earth sign, so it wants things a certain way. Then the sun moves into the more mutable air sign of Gemini, which is going to be about movement and activity. We can see in the sun's hand, the cell phone and a fencing rapier and a mask and wearing clothing for doing fencing, implying that there's a lot of movement going around. We see in the, in the room that he's standing in that there are the twins, which is one of the aspects of Gemini. We also look at just there's pairs of things and has to do with family, more like siblings, actually, in relationships with things and communicates. Then the sun moves into the cozy, warm sign of cancer, which is a cardinal water sign, initiatory water. Cancer is a little more secure oriented, seeking security and wanting to make sure that things are right to take care of the family. You can see in the sun's arm, um, a baby and a bottle. And in the area around, this is a nice, again, cozy room in which to raise a family. Then when the sun moves into the regal sign of Leo, we see that there's a robe and a scepter and a crown. And these are 
aspects of Leo, but the other part of it, you can see that the room that Leo is standing in, this Leo sun is standing in, which the sun rules Leo, is that it is in a room of creativity. And you can see in the background images of lovers and pairs. So this has to do with loving and courtship and our expression. So whether that's our expression and our creativity expression, which is really important as this is an artist studio we can see, or whether it's our children, which is an artistic expression as well, in a sense. Then we, the sun moves out of that fixed sign of fire, that me-oriented sign of fire, and moves into the more service-oriented, the more perfecting sign of Virgo, which is always seeking to make things better, to find ways to be of service to others. Sometimes people get a little upset. They think they can be a little bit too pushy. They can be a little bit too OCDC about things. But the truth is, it's because they want things to be as good as possible. If you're liking what I'm presenting today, please hit the like button and share. Please comment. Please ask questions. What is your experience with these different signs? What experience do you have as one of these signs? I really love hearing from you. I want to thank Christine Chianchi, the amazing artist who hand painted all of the Astro Theater figures on plastic, then photographed them all, scanned them, got them all in this. We got, we're able to put this into a book, which you can find on Kindle. On Apple, you can find from your local bookstore if you want to place an order. And this book is a really great way. It's using all the images I'm presenting today to provide you with the information you need to learn astrology in a nice, simple, and basic way. And thank you, Christine. Then we have the sun moving into the beautiful sign of Libra, cardinal air, all about relationships, seeking harmony and balance, doesn't like being in the presence of ugliness, whether it's ugly words or whether it's ugly surroundings or an argument, Libra wants to be happy and content with the people around them and not in the space of arguments. This is very different from the next sign, which is Scorpio, the sun in Scorpio. Scorpio doesn't really have any trouble getting into arguments. Scorpio doesn't have any trouble getting into things because if there's one thing that you can say about Scorpio, it's the word intense. They're not afraid to go there because they've been there before. A wise older Scorpio is probably going to be more likely to say, no, I'm not really interested in going there. But when you've got a young Scorpio still full of a lot of energy in there, they are going to confront you. They're going to want to talk about those deeper issues in life, and they're going to want to help you find the ways to transform and become who you're here to be. After going through the challenging sign of Scorpio, the sun moves into the optimistic sign of Sagittarius, the question seeker, the truth seeker, the one who wants to go forth and find adventure and excitement and whose motto is, don't worry, everything's going to be just fine. We then move into the sign of Capricorn. We can see the sun wearing the robes of a judge, having the hammer of a judge. This is about rules and limits and structures and boundaries. We can see Capricorn there in the business office. This is where things get done. Capricorn likes to get things done. Capricorn seeks success. Success is almost always guaranteed for Capricorn unless there are some very challenging aspects in their chart, or there is a decision to do something different than seeking the route of traditional success, which is very challenging for a Capricorn individual to do. After going through all of those rules and structures based in Capricorn, the sun comes into the sign of Aquarius, still ruled by the planet Saturn as it was in Capricorn but also ruled by the planet Uranus. So seeking a larger structure, seeking to, to break out of the box and to have freedom and understandings of how organizational systems work, whether that organizational system is an individual or whether that is a business or whether that is a country or whatever it is. Aquarius has that ability to kind of rise above it all and see what the real structure is.
Also, I really like that one with, the, you know, having having those flowers. And so what it is when you look at Aquarius, having that vessel, it is offering up the transcendental waters that come forth into the sign of Pisces. The dreamy, the poetic, the um, intuitive, thoughtful, sensitive, um, in a way, like Libra doesn't like disharmony, has a hard time with conflict, but doesn't have a problem if that's what's going on. It's really more in this place of being in acceptance. You can see wearing diaphanous robes, carrying a crystal ball. They tend to be into, interested in crystals and past lives and reincarnation. And they're seeking an understanding that is about letting go of all that which came before and stepping into a new arena of life and completing the cycle. I want to thank you for tuning in today. Again, please like, please share with your friends, please comment. What is your experience with this? Do you like to see a little bit more? Does this help you understand how the sun moves through the different signs and how we therefore each of us have different ways of expressing ourselves using different tools and wearing different costumes as we express ourselves in life. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much for tuning in today and have a great day.